Welcome to the Limitless Entrepreneur Podcast, your weekly dose of strategies and mindset tools to build a business in alignment with your purpose and get you playing a bigger game. I'm your host, Nicole Leno. Hello, and welcome to the Limitless Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Leno, and I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Sorry if my voice is a little bit funny, getting over the vid and... Still, my voice is not back 100%. So I'm a little huskier. It's my sexy voice for you guys. So we are talking today about projectors. This is a human design episode. We're going to talk, we're going to deep dive into projectors, what it means to be a projector, but specifically really how to unlock your magic, how to see the true gift that being a projector is and, and really stepping into your power as a projector. Now, projectors have this kind of calm aura about them. And by calm, I don't mean passive. Um, I don't mean there's a stillness. There's a still centered quality to projectors when they're in alignment. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a couple I can rattle off for you. I'll give you some famous projectors to start you off with. Because when people hear that they're a projector, that I, when I, when I, when I see people realize that they are projector, I've had a lot of people, and I feel like human design can sort of be like everything else in life. Blondes want to be brunettes. Brunettes want to be redheads. Like you always want to be something that you're not. You always want what somebody else has. And the grass is always greener. And this is very true with human design. I think the first step with human design is people run their chart and they wish they were something else. They're like so disappointed that it's not as magical, that, that they had something in their mind that they wanted to be, that you were hoping your chart would reinforce or validate for you or tell you, yes, this is in you. And when it's not there, it can be disappointing. And being a projector, because you hear the term waiting for the invitation, and we're going to get into all of that. Um, that you're not meant to initiate, that you need to be invited, all of these things that you, you don't have energy, which is not true. We're going we're gonna to bust some myths about projectors in this episode as well. But because you hear all of those things, you, you just hear limitation, limitation, limitation. And with this episode, I want to flip that completely because ha you have incredible power as projectors. I am surrounded by projectors. My like whole family are projectors um, that, that I live with. My husband's a projector. My son is a projector. My sister-in-law is a projector. She lived with us for a while. So I was just surrounded by projector energy. And there is this just incredible quality to projectors that when you're in alignment, what an amazing force and gift you are to the people who are in your life and who are in your world. It is this just incredible energy. And there are different types of projectors. So we're going to go through the types of projectors that there are. Um, and there's three categories. There's even more nuance underneath that, that is going to differentiate you even more because that's what human design is. It's, it is the, it is the science of differentiation is, is how it was, it was termed that it's about how we break ourselves down. Projectors is a big bucket, one of the five categories that we have, or four and a half, I guess, if you consider generators and manifesting generators kind of in this like combined but not combined bucket. I like to look at it as five categories. I look at many gens as a, as a separate one, probably because I am one. But um, projectors are the big bucket. But you'll see, you'll start to notice what the energy of the different types is. The more you get to know this and the more you know your own and focus on your own right now, or if you have a child, I do encourage you to really understand um, your family's designs and how you are different and how you operate differently. Because what the five categories tell us are how your energy is used because everything is an energetic exchange in, in this life and in this world. There are people that come into your world and they want something from you. And it's you deciding whether your energy that you have available, the type and quality of energy that you have, if you're a generator or a Manny Gen, people want your sacral energy. They want you to do things for them. They want you to create things. They want to access that. Why? Because usually it's the people who do not have that in the same sense that you do. They're looking for it. Now, there's an unspoken exchange that's happening between you and them before you understand human design. And then when you do, you get to understand how your sacral is responding to that if you're a generator. 
And if you're a projector, there are people who are probably generators <laughs> or manifestors or people who don't have specific qualities that you have that are energetically drawn to you when you're in alignment and they want access to your openness, your projector qualities, and they're inviting you into things with them. And that invitation is you being recognized, which is part of your signature. It's part of you living in alignment and a sign that you are in alignment. You're being recognized by the right people for your gifts. And you get invited into these situations and you get to decide whether that invitation is aligned for you or not, whether you are going to lend your gifts to the thing that they invited you to. That's how I want you to start looking at this. It's not you sitting around waiting for invitations. No, it's the waiting is your power, okay? Now I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rattle off some names of projectors. And, um, and I, I, I'm, I want you to, I think you'll start to see a theme. So these are some famous projectors out there. Um, Nelson Mandela was a projector, John F. Kennedy, Queen Elizabeth II, Steven Spielberg, Ron Howard, Ringo, <laughs> Mick Jagger, uh, Barbara Streisand, both Obamas, Abraham Lincoln. Now, while none of us have seen Abraham Lincoln live in front of us or anything like that, there is kind of, there's a vibe about him, right? And there's a vibe about Nelson Mandela. There's, I, what I want you to see is this, this common theme. There is this stillness, this um, inner strength quality to these aligned projectors. There's something, I mean, there's even some royalty in here. Princess Diana was another projector. Now there are different categories. There are subcategories to projectors, different types of projectors. And we're gonna get the, into those in a minute. But I wanted you to hear these different names and, and I want you to recognize the difference just in their energy, not what they do. Cause there are musicians in here. There are directors, there are world leaders. There, is, there are a lot of leadership positions in here. So this idea that a lot of projectors feel like, you know, they have to be the person behind the person. They can't be leaders. They can't be, um, you're absolutely leaders. It's what you're designed for. You're designed to lead because you see the things that others can't. And intellectually, you may not know how you know these things. You may not know how you know the way forward. You may not know how you know things about other people. It's because it's part of your energy. It's beca because you, you are intuitive in this way about other people. So let's dive in to some of the basics of projectors. For those of you who are newer to this, and, and even if you're not, maybe you'll hear this in a different way that will help you. So projectors, first of all, starting out at the beginning, the, your strategy is to wait for the invitation, to be invited to things. Now, um, one of the myths is that you have to be invited to everything. So projectors think like there's this image that they have of themselves being kind of a wallflower. Like you're sitting on the sidelines, just waiting for somebody to pluck you off the bench. That is not at all how it is. Um, in life, in everything that you do, you don't need to be invited into everything, but the big things in life. You fall in love, like you want to go on a date with somebody. Do you want to, you know, do you want to be um, friends with a certain person? Uh, are you making a big career move? Are you choosing to go in a certain direction with your business? Um, are you looking to move locations and, and buy a new house or move to a new city? These are things that invitations want to, you, you want to wait for those. You want to be invited into these things because that is how you will know if they are correct for you or not. Because that is how, when our strategy for each type, our strategy, and for projectors, it's, it's waiting for the invitation, is how the universe is communicating with you and delivering you what is in alignment for you. So with projectors, it's the invitations that you're quote unquote waiting for, but that is how the, that is how the universe is bringing you the aligned steps. And why? Because your energy needs to be invited into things. You are, projectors are about, quote unquote, the other. <laughs> They're about the other, meaning that you're here to be wise about other people. You're here to 
know a lot about the world, humanity, other people, doesn't mean that you can't know about yourself. In fact, it starts with knowing yourself that you're able to be an aligned projector. But what your work will be about, what your life will be about, will be a lot about other people. And that's, again, nothing that I'm saying here is a limitation. It's this is one of your gifts that you are able to know a lot about other people. But projectors, you have this, they, it's a penetrating aura. It's a very focused aura. Your energy has this ability to penetrate other people. Now, I have some um, particularly intrusive energy as well, if it's not used property, properly, if it's not invited, um, where if it's not invited, it's not welcome. And I like to think of this, this is a crude example, but if you, not everybody wants to be penetrated, you need consent. So the consent is the invitation. The invitation is how people say, I would like your help. Now, and, and it's not about you being plucked off the bench there. That's the recognition that someone's saying, I would like your help. I recognize your gifts. You're being recognized for who you are, for your strengths. And you get to decide if this person is recognizing you for the right things and whether you would like to accept. Do you want to give them access to your gifts? which are that you could see things in them that they can't, which is that you can see ways, if you were in corporate and someone invites you onto a project, that is an invitation that they want your help in, in maybe putting together this project, in seeing how it, sh how it should unfold and how it should be worked. It might be they want you to run a team Whatever that is, it's, it's your gifts are being invited to be used and you get to decide whether you want to lend your gifts to that particular thing. A client comes to you and wants to hire you. Do you want to lend your gifts to this person? Are they looking for the right gifts in you or do they see something that maybe they want to see, but they're not actually seeing you? And if you have a two or a five line, in your profile, that can definitely be the case. So it's, you will know when the invitations are right. You will understand whether, and that will be an internal knowing that you have of whether you're being recognized for the right things. Is this person inviting you in? And does this feel like an aligned invitation for you? Are they asking you to shine in the way that you feel you were meant to shine? Because that is what you're here to do. So your signature, when you are in alignment, you are, will feel successful. The projector's signature, signature theme is success. Recognition, which leads to success. You get recognized for the right things. You enter into the right invitations, into the right projects based on the invitations that you get. And then you feel successful. And that is just a feeling that you have. And that is telling you that you are in the highest vibration possible for you. That is, you don't have to look to overshoot it. You don't have to feel like your head is going to explode with like angelic songs or anything like that. When we talk about like these feelings of high vibration, your high vibration and your highest state for a, as a projector is going to feel, be feeling successful. That feeling of success is going to be the thing that is, is having you vibrate at the right level at your highest frequency. And when you are not, the red flag for you is bitterness. It's the opposite of success. Like you feel like you're being recognized. You feel like you are being successful. You feel like you're living the life that you're meant to lead, lead that, you are, that you feel recognized for your gifts. And when you don't feel recognized for your gifts and you don't feel like people are, are sending you invitations and you don't feel like you are being able to shine your light, then you will be in bitterness. That is your not self theme. And that's telling you, it's not telling you to do more. And this is one of the big misconceptions. And this is the biggest conditioning, I think, for a lot of projectors is, well, what can I do now? What can I do to turn this around? What can I do? So you run around and you try to be seen. 
And that is not how you get seen. It's actually the opposite. You take care of your energy. You stop trying to live like somebody else. And you live like yourself, which is you honor the energy that you have. You honor the definition and openness that you have in your chart and in your design. So I want to run through the three different projector types, because this will tell you even more. So the projector is the big category, but we have three subcategories of projectors underneath that, that tell you more about how you operate as a projector, because there are nuances. And of course, even beneath these three subcategories, we have even more nuances when we get into which centers you have defined, what your authority is, which channels you have. Like, all of that is going to get you down into finer and finer detail about your differentiation. But Today, we're going to cover these three categories, because if you, if you don't understand these subcategories and you don't know which one you fit into, you might be trying to operate like a, a different one, or some are more prone to certain types of conditioning and others are pr more prone to other types of conditioning. So let, let's cover them so we can, we can understand what these are. So the three types, three subtypes of projectors are the first one is the energy projector. This is the most common type of projector. An energy projector means that you have at least one motor center defined. Now, another common misconception about projectors is that they have these very open charts. Now it's true, a lot of them do, but plenty of them have lots of definition, have lots of centers defined. My son has four channels. He has all but three centers defined. Um, he only has one motor. But he is, he's, he's, a, he's an energy projector and he has a lot of definition. Um, so an energy projector means that you have at least one motor center defined. Now the motor centers are the ego or the will center, the sacral, which you will not have a sacral because projectors don't have a sacral. So you will not have that one, but there are four motor centers. I'll cover all four. Uh, it's the, the ego and the will, the sacral, the emotional solar plexus and the root center. Now, automatically, sacral gets eliminated from the projector category. So there's only three possibilities for energy projectors. You have your will center defined, you have your solar plexus defined, or you have your root center de defined, or a combination of those, okay? Now, if you're an emotional, if you have the emotional solar plexus defined, then you will be an emotional projector. That will be your authority. But we're not going to get into authorities here. We're just going to talk about these three subcategories. So energy projector. So you have at least one of those three motor centers defined. And what that means is motor centers are, are actually generating energy and moving energy through your body graph, through your chart, through you. They are, they are the urgency to do, the urgency to move, and depending on which one you have, it, which one you have defined or which ones you have defined, they, have a, they all have their own flavor because all of the different centers have a different, they're an energy hub with a specific type of energy that they cover. So if you have your root center defined as a projector, then you are going to have this, this urgency to do. There's going to be pressure and like motorized pressure to evolve, to succeed, to, to, um, to achieve. That's kind of what the root center themes are. If you have your emotional center defined, it's going to be your emotions are going to be the, the motor, the, the continuous energy that's pumping through you. There's a, um, there's, there's activity to these centers. Whereas other centers are more about awareness and they're more about feeling. And there's, there's a very different quality to a motor center that is, that is, um, that is moving and, and moving energy through you. And another one that is just allowing energy to pass through. Okay. So if you're an energy generate uh, an energy projector, excuse me, then you will have a little bit more of that get up and go. And so you'll have a bit more energy than the classic and the mental projectors will just naturally, you're going to have a little bit more access to that because you have a motor. However, the conditioning for you guys is going to be that to rely on that motor and potentially burn it out, potentially to rely on it too much where you could be conditioned to overwork very, very easily because of your, if you're an out of alignment projector, so if you think about this in like a corporate environment where um, you might be 
you, you might be at this job and they see how good you are at things. Like you have this innate ability to just get in there, know things, see how things unfold because that's your projector magic and you get in there, but they overwork you because they see how great you are. So they keep piling on work and you keep taking it because you're not paying attention to the type of invitations that you're getting and whether they are aligned for you and whether you have the energy for them or not, or whether you are burnt out or not. And you are just in people pleasing mode, which a lot of projectors can get into because you chase recognition. You chase that feeling of being successful and you do it in a way that's out of alignment for you, which, which utilizes your energy incorrectly, which burns you out. What is in alignment for an energy projector is working in bursts, working in these sprints, and then relaxing and, and allowing the rest that all of your openness needs. The fact that you only have that one motor, think about if you, if, if you had, if you had a, if you had a machine that ran on four motors, but you only had one online, you'd be very careful about not burning that one motor out because that's your only source of energy. It's very easy to burn that out. You'd be very careful about that. You might, you might give it rest. You might have it fail over and, um, and, and stop for a little while and take a rest. You would, you'd be kind to it. And that's how the projector needs to be. And the projector recharges with rest. Any type of projector recharges with rest. But for energy projectors, because you have that motor, access because it's there, um, you can just, you, you can abuse it pretty easily. So it's really important for you guys to pay attention. Am I getting invitations? Am I accepting them properly? Am I choosing the ones that are truly aligned for me and that I have energy for? Because if you don't have energy, it's not the right time. Okay. Second subcategory of projectors is the classic projector, which that means that you have um, the identity center and Anything above the identity center is, is uh, excuse me, <laughs> anything above the identity center is defined, okay? So you can have your spleen defined, you can have, uh, but that, uh, or, um, but you don't have any motors defined, but you do have definition below the throat because that's a distinction between this and the next category of projector that we're gonna talk about. So you can have the spleen defined, you have no motors defined basically, but you do have definition below your throat. This would make you a classic projector. A classic projector is really just about, um, it is, there's, there's a different quality to a classic projector. Without that motor sense, that, that, that motor humming all the time, you kind of naturally rest better than people. Um, you can't keep up with the hustle and bustle. And usually it'll kick you into bitterness very, very quickly. You'll get very frustrated that people are overworking you and either you will burn out trying to keep up or more than likely what I have seen, my experience with people who are non-energy projectors who fall into the classic category, but the classic category, um, they just, they'll, they'll shake it off or they'll find time to rest because they don't have a choice. My husband is a classic projector and the man knows how to rest. And it used to make me crazy because I'm, I'm a Manny Gen. I have a lot of energy. I have three motor centers defined. Um, so lots of energy, lots of buzzing happening around me. And my husband like naps like three times a day. <laughs> he's, he takes his breaks and he, and he like rests his body. It's not just that he's not doing work. It's that he's like, I have to like completely rest my whole body because he has no motors to find. Um, but he does know that he gets recognized for things. And he's actually, his bitterness comes a lot from being recognized and overused where he feels almost like that's a, um, like, like it's, it's abusive because you're, you're using my gifts too much. So he has, he's very good at setting boundaries. When you're in alignment as a classic projector, you protect your energy as any kind of projector. Your job is to protect your energy. And that's not to your detriment. It's actually how you draw more aligned invitations in, 
how you live, where you are best using your energy and your gifts. And I promise you, good things come when you start living with that. The conditioning is to think if I'm not keeping up, then I'm going to make less money. I'm not going to get the bonuses. I'm not going to get the clients. I'm not going to keep up. No, you actually go farther the more you protect your energy because you draw in with all of that openness that you have. The strength that you hold as a projector is how you create invitations and you diminish your strength when you are burnt out. Okay. So the last type is the mental projector. So that means they have the throat up and nothing underneath. Now this type is actually this, this type is, is really about very much about the other. And they can get very stuck in their heads because there's so much definition in their head. It means they have, um, they can have the head, Ajna, throat, or any, com well, not any combination. You can't just have the head and the throat. You need to have the Ajna in between, but you could have the head and the Ajna with no throat. You could have the Ajna and throat, and that's pretty much it. That would make you a mental projector. Now, if you're a mental projector, you're, you're automatically your authority is your environment. It's what we call outer authority, meaning you don't have a mechanism inside of you to make these decisions. All of your openness is drawing things to you. And your job is to gauge whether the environment is right for you. If you don't feel well, it's about you looking at the environment and being like, I can't, I either can't make this decision in this environment because you're taking in and experiencing the energy of everybody around you. Now, when you're in alignment, when you know what other people's energy feels like versus just feeling like you're out of sorts. So what can happen is when you don't know about this and you're a mental projector and you walk into a party and you start to feel really overwhelmed it's because you're experiencing the energy of everybody who's near you. And if there's lots of people, maybe some people are drunk. Maybe some people are really out of alignment. Maybe, you know, the, maybe people are just having a good time. And, and so what, what's going to happen is if, if the vibe isn't right for you, you will feel it almost immediately. And the conditioning can be that you feel like you're, you might hide and, and not, manage your energy well, but you might think that it's you, that something's wrong with you, or that you don't like people, or that you don't know how to relate to people, or you can't do a lot of these things. You can't be in crowds. And that, that's not true. You just need to understand that it's that you need to take your space and that you can't, at a family gathering, you probably can't make an aligned decision for you right then because you're experiencing other people's stuff. So by nature, you have a lot of openness and it's your gift. It's your gift to be open and to experience other people that, in these ways. You're very wise about that. You are very wise about other people, but you need to be in alignment. You need to recognize your gift and protect your gift. Um, your, your gift is that openness. Your gift is to feel so, cause it's one of those things where, um, you know, the gift of human design, like I say, it's, it shows you who you're not. So you're free to be who you are. And as projectors, if we're breaking down projectors, we are, you're, we're looking at, you want to be recognized. You're here to be recognized, but you need to understand what your gifts are. If you want to be recognized for them. Otherwise, you will not know what invitations are right for you or not. So to close out, I just want to break down if, if, if HG shows you who you're not, so you're free to be who you are. Let's talk a little bit about who you're not and who you, who you, who you are here, just, just in general talking about projectors. Now, there's always nuance. There's always, there's always something if you are, you know, if you're a two, five versus a one, three projector, if you're an emotional projector versus a mental projector, there's going to be vast differences between these, but these are some high level pieces that, that will tell you who the projector is meant to be and who they are not meant to be. And when you can start living in alignment with the things that are correct for you, and again, you don't have to believe it. And, and this was something that, that 
Ra, who, who is the, the founder of human design, the, the transmitter of human design, however you want to call it. Um, but what Ra said was that you don't have to believe in human design. I'm not asking you to, it's not a belief system. It's, it's a mechanical system that you experiment with. So don't believe it, try it and see how it goes for you. If you don't like it, if it's not working for you, then throw it away. But very few people do. When you start to experiment with it, most people just go deeper and deeper and deeper because it changes your life in the best possible way. So let's cover a little bit here about what projectors are designed to be and what they are not designed to be. So projectors, let's start with who you are, wh what you're here to do, who you're here to be. You are here to take in life. You're here to experience what we call the other, which is just the, uh, which are just other people, other beings in life. You're here to take in a lot of beauty. You're here to take it in. And if you think about that, and you think about if you're running around trying to be a generator and you're burning yourself out doing that and you're trying to move really fast, you can't take anything in if you're moving too fast. It's like the Ferris Bueller's day off quote, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop to look around once in a while, you could miss it. That's projectors. If you can't, if you don't stop, if you keep going, and you're draining yourself, then you miss the magic that you are here to take in. And that is what becomes your wisdom. You cannot become wise until you start living as you are meant to live. You are here to be still, to cultivate stillness inside of you. You're here to guide people. You're here to see. So you need to somewhat be the observer here. You need to trust your energy, trust that your aura is doing the work for you, that you don't have to chase a damn thing. It's going to do the work for you if you trust it and you live in alignment with this. Projectors, you're here to be seen. You are here to allow, okay? Who you are not here to be, what you are not here to do. You are not designed to work consistently, to work all day, and to build and create everything yourself. You can do it. This isn't a limitation. It's just not the best use of your energy. And you'll probably end up bitter, which will lower your frequency, which will lower your alignment and lower your energy. And you will start pulling things to you and attracting to you invitations that are more lessons than gifts that are meant to try to bring you out of that instead of, but, but you're going to get, you, you get what you are a match for. Low vibration, low invitations, or no invitations, which leads to more bitterness. You're not here to chase. You're not here to run around trying to be seen. You're not here to control things. You are not here to initiate. And when you can start looking at these things now, as I said, those, if you started to think like, oh, well, I want to initiate, and that means I can't do this and I can't do that. And I can't do this. I challenge you to start looking at this from an empowered perspective, that these are gifts. What a gift that you don't have to work hard. I wanted to be a projector so badly when I first read the human design. I was like, I want to be the guide. I want permission to not have to work so hard. I want permission to like nap. And it doesn't mean I can't do those things, um, but, but it, it isn't necessarily my design. I'm here to do a lot more. And that is true to who I am. But you guys, you get to, your energy actually attracts invitations when you are resting, when you are enjoying yourself, when you're feeling expanded. So what a gorgeous gift to be told that like, this is, this is the path to you getting more is not doing more, but that is a huge adjustment because you're very conditioned. Most projectors, I'm not going to say you, but most projectors are very conditioned to feel like they do have to do more and more and more and more and more and more. And that's just not the case. So I hope you loved this. I hope if you're a projector or you have a projector in your life, certainly if you have a child who is a projector, please don't try to get them to do all the things that you, if you're a generator or a manifesting generator, um, 
if you, or if you're a manifester, if you're anything other than a projector, um, or if your kid is a, is not an energy projector, understanding that their energy is going to be very different. Their access to it is going to be very different than yours. My son is a projector. I have to give him lots of rest. I have to make sure we build days where there's, there's break periods because he can't take a lot. Um, and it's not a limitation. It's just in order for us to have the most fun as a family, it's better for us to have these little breaks in between. So we just, we, we have, we have ways that we deal with it. Um, and we have a much better time that we are working with his design and my husband's design rather than everybody, me trying to muscle everyone into being like me and burning them out and making them feel very, very bitter. So, um, that that's my soapbox. Please uh, pay attention to this. If you have kids and your partner, if they're a projector, start to be very sensitive to their energy and also recognize what a gift it is to have them in your life. They're going to show you things about yourself that you wouldn't be able to find on your own. And how beautiful is that? So I hope you found value in this. I hope you loved it. If you did, please leave us a review on iTunes or whatever, on iTunes or on Spotify. Please leave us a review. Share this in your stories and tag me. I'm at Nicole Lano official. And if you, if you want, I have a free guide for you. If you are a projector, we have some of the information that we covered in here and a little free guide for you on, on maximizing your energy as a projector and breakdown of those three subcategories for you. So if you're interested in that, please go over, jump out over to the show notes. We have a link for you for that guide that you can get that for free. All right. Um, please, everyone, remember, you are only limited by the limitations that you accept and that you view as limitations. So when you stop accepting those limitations, that is when you become limitless. So go out there and be limitless, everyone. I will see you in the next episode. If you loved this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And if you want to stay in touch with us, we would love to have you as a part of our Facebook community, Practical Manifestors. It's a community for process-driven women looking for clear and actionable steps to embodying a life of wealth and alignment. Join us at Practical Manifestors in Facebook or go to www.innerceogroup.com.